Hi church family, hope you're all really well. I know it's normally Austin and I that will be doing this weekly devotion, but we thought we'll go back in time by about 2,000 years and introduce you to two of our really good friends. Now they'll introduce themselves, tell you a bit about who they were, and then tell you about their encounters with Jesus and how it not only changed their lives, but changed the way that they saw each other. Hi, my name's uh, Simon. Well, really a lot of my friends call me Simon the Zealot. Let me tell you of a special skill of mine. I can smell a Roman from a mile away. They have no right to be in our land. They are occupiers, thieves, pagans, idolaters. This land belongs to us. It was given to us by God. There is no way that me and my comrades are just going to sit around and just passively wait for the kingdom of heaven to arrive. No way. Did you see did you see Phineas do that in the book of Numbers? Did he just sit around? No, he took a spear and he fixed the situation. So we're going to bring the kingdom of heaven by force, by the sword. We're going to make those Romans run home. We're going to put a real king on the throne of David, not some fake king Herod. Oh, and don't get me started on those Pharisees, politicking, compromising, selling out. But you know what really, really makes my blood boil? It's these Jews who actually have the nerve to collect taxes for Rome. I mean, paying taxes to Caesar is in effect saying that you're a slave of Rome. But collecting taxes for Caesar Taking money from your own people and pocketing half of it for yourself? That's treachery. Those tax collectors are scum. My name is Levi, or otherwise known as Matthew. I like to think of myself as a pragmatist. I see the world as it is. And as it is at the moment, we are in a situation where we find ourselves having to work with Rome. You can't please everyone. You do this and it upsets some people. You do the opposite and then it upsets other people. Pleasing people is like a dog chasing its own tail. So I don't really bother trying. Nearly all my friends are from work. Now, I don't have the most prestigious work in the land, but to be honest, I'm kind of disliked by a lot of people for my work. Well, actually, if I'm to be really honest, I'm utterly despised for my work. But you know what? I'm paid really well for the work I have to do. And it covers the social costs I pay. You see, I'm a tax collector. No, no, don't look at me like that. Wait, wait, wait a second. Who are you to pass judgment on me? But then I met Jesus. I still remember so clearly that day where Jesus spoke to me. His voice, you know, pierced deep within my soul. And it was as if he asked me, Why? Why are you so angry, Simon? Without even saying those words. And as he spoke to me, it felt as if, you know, wave after wave of his peace just overwhelmed me. I mean, every Roman soldier could have been you know, thrown out to the sea. Herod could have been chased out of the land. And it would still would have been incomparable to the peace that I had in Jesus' presence. Uh, and you know what? As I, as I followed Jesus through the land, I saw how he healed even the centurion servant. How he cast out the demon from the Canaanite woman's daughter. And that was when I realized just how, how small my vision for the kingdom of heaven was. I was so ashamed. I thought, I thought I kept the law in my own eyes, but I had fallen so short. I saw, the, I saw the treachery in my own heart. But Jesus Jesus still pulled me in close. He, he washed my feet and he showed me that bringing about the kingdom of heaven begins first with enthroning Jesus, enthroning the son of David as king of my life. But then I also met Jesus. That day, there were crowds just hustling past our tax booths, 
As usual, some would just shake their heads at us, and then others would look at us and spit on the ground in disgust, and then some couldn't even bear to look at us. You know when you get that feeling that when someone is looking at you? Well, I looked up, and I saw Jesus was looking straight at me, but there was no judgment in his eyes. There was no disgust. There was no weighing me up. Just love. I don't know how to describe it, but it was a look of just pure love. It's one thing to be noticed by Jesus, but for him to stop and to look so intently at me with nothing but pure love was just amazing. But it didn't stop there. Jesus, the Son of God, then spoke to me. Me, yes, me. And he simply said, follow me. Now, there had been rumors that he called only simple, good-hearted folks to follow him. But me, out of everyone, me. Oh, how could it be that my God would stop, look and call me? And how else could I respond than to stop, drop and follow? I began to truly live from that moment on. I'm Simon, as you now know, and this is my dear brother Levi. But I like to call him Matt. And he is a follower of Jesus and a child of God. Hi everyone, I'm Matthew and this is my dear brother Simon, the Zealot. And he also is a follower of Jesus and a child of God too. I hope you enjoyed our dramatised version of the life of both Simon the Zealot and uh, Levi or Matthew the tax collector. How about, we, uh, how about we close our time in prayer? Heavenly Father and gracious God, we just thank you that uh, in Christ uh, that you bring us all together, that you bring us into true unity, Lord. And uh, despite the vast differences in the backgrounds, the upbringings, the, um, the, the vocations, the worldviews um, of both Simon and Levi, that you brought, uh, you brought them both near to you. You brought them into your inner circle. You made them disciples and apostles. And uh, their hearts were melted, their minds were changed, um, and their lives were affected. And... And their relationship together was was dramatically impacted um, by the fact that you um, drew them in close to you and reconciled them both to God. And so, Father, we just pray that this um, would be a reality in our lives uh, in a time where, um, yeah, division seems to abound. Father, we pray that we'll draw even closer to your loving Son in these days. Amen. Amen.